Hello? Oh, hello. My name's Adam Smith. I'm calling from NobelPrize.org, the website of the Nobel Prize in Stockholm. Many congratulations on the award of the Nobel Prize. Well, thank Prize. you. Where, where am I calling you? You're, you, you're in Maine. Uh, that... I, you've reached me where I've lived for many years in the middle of nowhere Maine, rural Maine, also known as central Maine, <laughs> in the extreme northeast of this great country of ours. <laughs> Sounds a beautiful place to be located. It is physically beautiful, including I'm looking out the window, it's a very beautiful day today, which it often is. Yeah. Full colors and the like, I guess. Now, not quite yet, but it's still green as can be, but it's because Maine is not like Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> You're being awarded today for unraveling the, the mechanisms of the circadian rhythm. Yes, correct. That, that was about half of our work during my time when I was employed, had to do with circadian rhythms, indeed. That became amongst our most well-known research uh, achievements, if any, uh, mm. usually and relentlessly co-authored with Rostash, with whom we've already spoken. <clears throat> so he, he and I joined forces in the early, mid-'80s, and imagined that we might, or we might not, as occasionally go onward and upward, uh, doing research together in that arena, which often involved, crucially, what I call AIs, uh, actual investigators, like <laughs> students, postdoctoral supervisees, uh, from the two labs, working very closely together, even day by day. So that was enjoyable. We, it wasn't that either lab was way out on its own limb. Uh, we had a lot of uh, mutual support. I think it's fair to say. And you obviously had, had a very special working relationship. There was something magical about the team. Right. It was, this was based in large part on becoming close personally at the beginning, where our research interests in very general terms were in genetics writ large. It was only after six, seven, or eight years that we started to work things together and imagine that possibly our backgrounds and our skills, if any, might be complementary. The key reason that we got into that kind of relationship was because we were personally close. We had mutual interest in low-culture stuff like sports and rock and roll music and abusable substances and stuff. And so we spent a lot of time just carousing or sitting together in misery at local sports stadiums. We had also certain many similar interests, even in the pre-rhythm research days. He is a molecular geneticist. I is a straight-up fruit fly geneticist. Mm. Mm. And, yeah, and that brings on to, us on to flies. We should say a word for flies on this day, of all days, because once again the power of the fly as a model organism has been yeah, demonstrated. That's right. This is something I've always... Uh, I, I, uh, I was taught when I was a graduate student about what a phrase that's known as the lore of Drosophila, to know about the deep history going way all the way back in the 1920s and the 40s and the 90s and now the second decade of the current century. It's just one of a zillion examples of how basic research on a supposedly irrelevant organism can have have broader significance than, than with regard to what's going on in terms of that organism itself. And this has been true of fruit fly research, which has been a major contributor for decades, for well over a century, actually. Well, let's dedicate this day to the fly. <laughs> yeah, the, this, the, 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 the key fourth awardee here is, the, is, as some of us call them, the little fly. <laughs> So the little flies deserve another tip of the hat, I think. That's lovely. In terms of what has happened today. Mm -hmm. Indeed indeed they do. And um, it's been such a pleasure speaking to you. I'm very much looking forward to meeting you. W will you be coming to Stockholm in December? Yeah, yes, I will. I think I almost have to, but I'm willing to. Good. I was in Sweden once in my time, back at the time when Swedish folk drove on the left-hand side of the roadway. So I'm uh, looking forward to going back to Stockholm, where I once was.
1967. <laughs> <laughs> we very much look forward to meeting you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.